Some physicists often say that we are formed from the dust of stars. Beyond poetry, the placement makes sense. I would say that we would be integrated with the stars for the energy that animates us. There is no real difference between matter and energy as long as one can be transformed into the other. This is what Einstein's famous equation, E equal mc2, predicts. In the videos of images of the universe, I have highlighted the importance of the role of light, which, in its role as a messenger, would have replaced the very space that shelters it. When acting, light would leave space out of the communication process. Hence, the necessity of having to wait for the late manifestation of distant events. Matter is always outside what we observe, because, for a particle to be observed, it must first be illuminated. As the lighting disturbs the position or speed of particles, it prevents us from seeing them, in real time. When seen in motion, the particle is no longer there, at least as it looked, before it was illuminated. One cannot rule out the possibility that matter was motionless, outside of what we observe, or until the moment when it was illuminated. When an electron is illuminated, it appears to revolve around the nucleus of the atom, in uniform circular motion. This periodic motion is related to the light, used to illuminate the particle. This light performs a simple harmonic movement, composed of two phases. When unfolded, this circular motion behaves as if it were a light wave. Because it is repetitive, or cyclic, the movement is similar to that of a pendulum. When describing the harmonic movement of the space messenger with the help of the mass spring set, we are also describing the movement of the illuminated particle. Space is no longer part of the process due to our dependence on particle lighting. It can be said that the behavior of space merges with that of light as it is the only tool available to describe what would happen to the geometry of space. Space will bend, if the messenger says yes. On the other hand, space could even curve in the real plane of the universe, while the messenger could give us the impression that it would be flat. We have no way of escaping the yoke of electromagnetic radiation and the information it makes available to us. For the images of the universe project, the relative and continuous movement between the galaxies would be one of the reflections of the performance of this messenger from space. So much so, that, in mechanics, it is admitted that there is no absolute motion in spacetime. According to science, when galaxies moved away from each other, this would be the result of the stretching of the space that shelters them. This can be seen in the model of an inflating balloon, where we painted small dots on the rubber, representing the galaxies. Thus, they should maintain their original positions, despite the relative movement between them. The inflationary theory would come up against the simple harmonic movement, performed by cosmic radiation, acting as a messenger of space. The radiation we are talking about would not be the one emitted by the galaxies at this moment, and which would not have reached us yet, as there is no way to track something that would not have left traces. Therefore, the radiation that is actually used to see the stars is called the background. If the universe were continuously expanding, it would be difficult to explain the periodic and cyclical motion of stars in a distant galaxy around the galactic core. This movement would favor the concentration of their masses and the formation of galactic clusters. Starting from the necessary illumination of the particles, our observation would unify the movement of an electron around its nucleus, of a planet around the Sun, and of the stars around the nucleus of a galaxy. 
there would be no difference between the events mentioned, as the observer is not interested in how long the lives would have taken to travel through space until it became a background radiation. The night sky shows us the extent of the domains of circular motion. That is, the light that we use to describe space tells us that this movement would be the same that would dictate the orbits of the planets and the pendulum movement of distant galaxies. A galaxy that today shows us that its light predominates in the infrared range could have already shown a few billion years ago a tendency towards the predominance of the ultraviolet. However, in the particular case of planets, and thanks to Kepler, we have a serious indication that light is causing confusion in our way of evaluating planetary motion through the light of the Sun that the planets reflect into space. The planets would perform elliptical rather than circular orbits. The Earth approaches the Sun at a distance of 147 million kilometers. This proximal point, in the orbit, is called perihelion. Afterwards, the Earth moves away, in the direction of aphelion, placed at 152 million kilometers. In both cases, the speed of the planet varies, over time. The Earth accelerates as it approaches the Sun, and is the opposite, as it moves away. The reality of planetary motion, then, does not match the circular motion that the observer relays to the Sun over the ecliptic. This motion would have constant velocity and acceleration. Would distant galaxies obey the same Kepler laws for planetary motion? No one knows for sure. But, as it becomes evident that galaxies could not be seen if their light were not already here, this becomes possible and acceptable. The real universe does not depend directly on our observation. It's just there. But, what if our observation were putting a universe, originally static, in relative and continuous motion? Imagine that after many years of walking around inside your house, arranging your books on the shelf and the pictures on the wall, you had regrettably lost your eyesight. Despite the sudden change, after a while you could safely move inside your house, as you would have the image of the rooms filed in your memory. With similar behavior, all matter in the universe could be called dark until it could be observed. Even shining in the firmament, a star could remain dark until the moment its light reached Earth. Before that, the star did not exist, although that depended on our point of view. If Kepler's laws could be applied on an astronomical scale, the nucleus of a galaxy would move out of the center and into the focus of a virtual ellipse. The light emanating from this galaxy, however, would still tell us that the stars revolve around the galactic center in circular and uniform motion. That is, with constant velocity and acceleration. This seems to happen in practice and would have puzzled physicists. When studying some spiral galaxies, astronomer V. Rubin noticed that the stars furthest from the galactic center moved as quickly as the more central ones, which would not be expected. Again, our dependence on the messenger from space manifests and confuses us. It would be the same reason why the light of the sun tells us that it moves in the sky and the ecliptic, forming a perfect circle and not an ellipse. We are getting close to our goal of demonstrating the importance of our subjective assessment of cosmological events. If the universe were really static, it would escape our sensory perception.
It is because our brain was designed to perceive only continuous and relative movement, inseparable from time. The methods we use to assess physical reality are like appendages to our memory. It will have the final word. If we pay attention to the harmonic movement of light, represented in the model of the mass spring set, we will easily recognize three stages for the spring. It would initially be at rest, but could be stretched or contracted. When we use this model to describe light, its relative motion could not reach the spring's rest position. This is also observed in the behavior of space, as there could be no forces acting if it reached the position of rest. In this case, the space would no longer be curved and would flatten, which would violate the uncertainty principle. Excluding the rest state of the set, the movement of light would become continuous. Light from distant stars could either be in the spring tension phase or in the contraction phase, but the two phases would exclude each other by the resting phase. This would justify the isotropic behavior of light in spacetime as it would no longer depend on the direction of its propagation. Then, a pendulum movement, orchestrated by light, could establish itself between the stars of a galaxy, even if they remain static, in the real plane of the universe. The relative and continuous movement, between them, would result from the impossibility that their light, and its harmonic movement, could reach the position of rest. It seems clear that the problem would only involve our subjective interpretation since we don't have any other tool to evaluate space other than light. The impossibility that space could reach its resting position, an event that would be informed by light, would generate the necessary impulse for the stars of the galaxy to enter into continuous and relative motion. This movement should be elliptical, but, in practice, it appears to be circular and uniform.